Thank you to the Cheltenham Exchange team for inviting me back for the Punchestown Festival. It was a real enjoyable time at Aintree and I cannot wait to get stuck into this card for the week. Not many prices I fancy tomorrow, but two that I'm going to give you for the first day. And the first one is in the 340, which is the listed Mayor's Novices Hurdle, and that's Party Central. 7-2 to two as I'm looking now, about lunchtime on Monday, and I do think she'll go off a bit shorter. I think Dino Blue, the favourite, is going to drift on the day. She's had two... Well, what I like to say, disappointing performances. The first one at the uh, Cheltenham Festival where she was disappointing. She just, like, didn't travel. She didn't jump like she did in her maiden. And again, at Fairy House last week, she just didn't look like the same horse that we all expected her to be. So for me, the horse to be on is Party Central. I do think Grangie's got a big chance. I think it's between Party Central and Grangie, but I'm slightly favouring the Gordon Elliott mare. And at 7-2, to two, I'm going to be on her. My second selection comes in the 4.15, which is the champion novices hurdle. We have an odds-on favourite, Sir Gerhard, the winner of the Ballymore. But I'm not going to go for him. I'm actually going to side with Dysart Dynamo. I know the form of Sir Gerhard's Ballymore win has been franked at entry by Three Stripe Life. But I just think the way that Dysart Dynamo won the Moscow Fly novices hurdle in January here over course and distance will really play to his strengths again with a small small field very select field mighty potter in here also who ran no race in the super at Cheltenham but he's got grade one form grade one winning form so I'm gonna go for Dice Art Dynamo I just think Sir Gerhard's a bit of a travelly thing two and a half miles next year as well for him for me he's the anti-post pick if he goes for the turners but Today, I'm going to go for Dysart Dynamo to jump his rivals into submission and make amends for Cheltenham, where he would have probably finished second to Constitution Hill. So that's my two selections, Party Central in the 340 and Dysart Dynamo in the 415. I'm Katie Winter, and here are my selections ahead of day one of the Punchestown Festival. My first selection is Sir Gerhard in the Champion Novice Hurdle at 415. He's back of an extended two miles here, following an extremely impressive Cheltenham Festival win in awful conditions. He's a three-time Grade 1 winner, including two Grade 1 wins over hurdles, beating Three Stripe Life on both occasions. A horse has since gone on to win a Grade 1 of his own at Aintree. I think Dice at Dynamo is a very talented horse, but his pre-race demeanour at Cheltenham put me off ever so slightly. He was too keen there and looked to waste plenty of energy prior to his fall. He'll probably get it easy out in front this time around without John Bond in the mix, but I'm still siding with his stable mate Sir Gerhard as I believe he's the most reliable selection as he's performed professionally this season and he's definitely the one to beat in this field. My second selection is Clifton Warrior in the handicap hurdle at 4.50. I'm interested in him from an each way angle and hopefully he will be available at a double figure price. I think he could be slightly unexposed. He was last seen finishing second behind Arctic Warrior at Rexford, with both of them pulling away from the field impressively. Early in the season, however, he did disappoint over two and a half miles, but I do think this trip will suit him, and hopefully slightly better conditions will see him show improvement. He's inexperienced, but is fairly treated at the weights, and jockey Mike O'Connor is set to claim £5, which I hope will help him run into a place. My final selection is Fury Road in the Champion Novice Chase at 6.35. He chased home a Hoy Senora entry, beating Lombresse and Brave Man's Game. Those two probably weren't at their best and may have had some issues, but Fury Road travelled well and was beaten by a possible future Gold Cup contender. I think he's been performing well since making the switch to fences, and he's been running in really competitive company, including against Galloping de Champs. He was also beaten by Gabby Nacco on chase debut, a horse who subsequently went on to finish a good second behind Edward Stone and the Arkle at Cheltenham. I also have slight worries over Bob Ollinger stepping up in trip and maybe not being over his issues. I think he's more suited to hurdles, as he hasn't appeared to be the most natural jump over fences, so I'm happy to take him on here at a short price. Miller's Bank is a talented horse, but he isn't always the most fluent and does make some mistakes, so I'm going with Fury Road for Gordon Elliott. Hi, this is John here from the Cheltenham Exchange with my picks for the opening day of the Punchestown Festival. My nap is Bob Ollinger in the Champion Novice Chase at 6.35. He is being stepped up in trip, which is sure to suit, and if he can replicate some of his early season form, I feel he can win this hard held. My each way shout is Clifton Warrior in the handicap hurdle at 4.50. He was a beaten favourite in his last race and was put at £3 for that defeat, but with Mikey O'Connor taking off £5, he looks a decent each way bet in this. I also have a third pick, which is a bit of a tentative one, 
and it's Caldwell Potter in the 6pm Goff's Land Rover bumper, which has been won by some nice types in the past. He is also the brother of Mighty Potter, who has shown some decent form during this current season. That's it from me. Good luck, everybody. Hi, this is Jamie Wren here of Chant Mountain. Um, looking forward to the punch time for the week. Here are my selections for day one. Uh, starting for the very first race, the Mayor's Novice Hurdle listed race at 340. I look like the look here of Dino Blue. I really think she has a right chance. If she settles, she still finished good, I think about 17 lengths ahead of Grangey. Rate of five pound higher than Grangey, still at 135. I think she is probably a favourite chance here. She's top rated with Brides Hill. I like her a lot. She settles, I think, with a more experience in racing. I think this is her day to shine, and I will go with Dino Blue in the first. Uh, moving on then to the 450, the two mile handicap hurdle. I had a good look at this race. I backed along the last day in the Ferry House race. Um, it was a good winner for me, but I'm going to take her on. I could be stupidly taking her on here with another Willie Mullins horse. The other thing, I was nearly down on the selection of Faro, but he just can't jump for me. And look, if he gets it right one day, he probably will rock up. If hopefully it's not tomorrow and I change my mind. But I'm going to go for an each way selection here at 16 to 1. And it's a horse of Willie Mullins again. Uh, look, it's a Willie Mullins Benefit Festival. Uh, it's Tempo Chapter 2, uh, with an amount of Danny Mullins. He's 16 to 1, 20 to 1 in places each way. The reason I'm going and still hanging on to his form line with being 13 lengths behind El Fabiolo in Tremor, obviously went on to uh, be second to John Bonnet in the Um, I suppose the last day didn't stay three miles of Ferry House and Bugs more than one. But if you look back at the county hurdle, finished close up to the county hurdle, it was only like a length behind Far Out, and that's a good run for me. So it'll be Tempo Chapter 2 in that race. And then finally, the 525. In Ergamine, as you know, is the champion chaser. Um, obviously, Chacon fell and Shishkin ran below form, but I'm going to take an Ergamine on with the Punchestown horse. To me, I think this horse is unbeatable in Ireland. Look, might, an Ergamine might beat him tomorrow, but it has to be Chacon Bersois, 13 to 8, 7 to 4. It's his track, speed track, punched down two miles. You can't get better than Chacon around two miles in Ireland. So it'll be Chacon Bersois. So thank you, lads, and... Uh, We'd see you for day two. Hello everyone, Ian here from the Cheltenham Exchange. Here are my three picks for the Punchestown Festival day one. Firstly, I'm going with Grand G in the 340. Grand G is coming back down to two miles and it should suit better after finishing six at Ferry House over two miles four just over ten days ago. Finished third in the Mayor's Office Hurdle with Cheltenham, a fourth at Leopard Sound in December. To which three strike player was second and sinks ranked the form by winning at Aintree. Grangey has won at Punchestown previously, granted in the bumper, but seems to be the horse with the most graded experience in the race, and 4 to 1 to me is a decent price. My next pick is Sir Gerhard in the 415. I believe Townhead has affected the markets by choosing Sergi over Dysart Dynamo, to which Sergi is now odds on. It's interesting that Willie has decided to bring Sergi back over two miles following his Bannimore win at the festival. But to me, dropping down in trip shouldn't be an issue, and he's the classy and the versatile horse of the race. Of an interesting note, could we see Willie maybe choosing Sergi to be his champion hurdle horse next year? Lastly, I'm going with Bob Onger in the 635. Interesting that Henry has decided to send Bob Bollinger over three miles at this stage of the season. Bob has won at three miles previously, but at point-to-point -point level in November 19. To me, the threat to Bob Bollinger is Fury Road, who was second to Sir Ahoy, Ahoy Senor, should I say, at Aintree, and won at Leopardstown at three miles at Christmas, beating Ron Wilfred at Vanillier. Is that good form? Maybe not, but we shall see. But it should be a cracking race. Good luck, everyone. Hi, it's Deck here from the USL podcast, and I have three selections for Tuesday of the Punchdown Festival. My first selection comes in the 450, which is a Grade B handicap hurdle. Prominent flat trainer Mick Halford runs Ardler here. Ardler was toured to Bambridge and not Fleuron on his most recent note. He beat Farmer's Lodge and deployed Getway in a maiden hurdle at Navin. And before that, he was second to Grand Jury. He comes off, he comes here off 125 and could be thrown in. 
My second selection isn't the champion chase of 525. In my opinion, Jack and Pursois is the fastest horse in training. He's actually the highest rated horse in the race, and I think they'll all struggle to live with his speed. My final selection is at 635, and that's the champion novice chase over three miles. For me, this race is between the two Jiggins Town horses, Fury Road and Beacon Edge. But I'll side with Beacon Edge, who wants the ground as fast as possible, and that's exactly what he's going to get here. He won the Drinmar on fast ground, outstaying Fury Road. Unfortunately, he fell in the PJ Moriarty, but I think fences will help him see out the three miles really, really well, and I think he's great value at about 10 to 1. Thanks.